Hey everybody, Joe here from Avalon. Getting ready to hire your first employee is an exciting milestone as a business owner. If you're going to build a valuable business, you're going to need the help of some great employees. But it's also easy to feel overwhelmed with everything involved in the hiring process. There are a bunch of regulations to understand, steps to follow, and best practices to consider. Fear not, we're about to simplify things. This video will help you navigate your way through the essential stages of the hiring process. We'll first quickly cover the rules that you'll need to follow so you've got the fundamentals in place. Then I'll walk you through the key steps for hiring your first employee. After watching this video, you'll know exactly what you need to do so you don't miss any information and your new employee is set up for success. So all that and nothing else coming right up. As you embark on the journey of hiring your first employee, it's important to know the employment regulations in Canada. These rules ensure fairness and safety in the workplace. First, let's look at the various types of workers that you can hire. In general, there are full-time employees, part-time employees, and contract positions. It's important to first understand what type of worker you want to hire, as there can be different rules for each of them. In this video, I'll be talking about either part-time or full-time employees, which is different from hiring a contractor. For more clarification on employees versus contractors, check out our video linked in the description below. We'll start with full-time employees. Now, full-time employees usually work around 35 to 40 hours per week, though this can vary depending on the industry or company policy. As an employer, you are often expected to provide full-time employees with a range of benefits, which can include things like pay time off, as well as health and dental benefits. Part-time employees, on the other hand, work fewer hours than their full-time counterparts. The specific number of hours can vary, but it's typically less than 30 hours per week. Now, part-time employees might not have access to the same range of benefits as full-time employees, but they're still entitled to certain protections under employment law, such as vacation, holiday pay, and minimum wage. Each type of employment has its own advantages and disadvantages. Full-time employees, for example, can provide stability and continuous work, but they also can require a significant commitment from the employer in terms of benefits and protections. Part-time employees, on the other hand, provide more flexibility, but coordinating schedules and managing a larger number of employees can be challenging. Being aware of these factors can help you make an informed decision that benefits both your business and your future employees. Next, you'll need to have a basic understanding of the federal and provincial regulations relating to employment in Canada. These laws govern how employers and employees interact. Key regulations include the Employment Standards Act, Human Rights Act, and laws about workplace health and safety. The Employment Standards Act sets out the minimum standards for things like hours of work, pay, vacation, and leaves of absence. You can find the various employment standards for each province and territory linked in the description below. The Human Rights Act, also linked below, protects employees from discrimination. It ensures everyone has an equal chance to work regardless of things like their age, gender, or race. Workplace health and safety laws are about keeping employees safe at work. They cover a wide range of issues from handling hazardous materials to preventing workplace violence. Each province and territory also has their own resources for this. Fire up that old Google machine to find the applicable workplace health and safety resource for your location. Understanding and following these regulations is an important part of being a responsible employer and can save so many headaches down the line. In the next section, we'll move on to the essential steps of the hiring process. Hiring the right person for your small business isn't as simple as posting a job ad and waiting for someone to apply. It's a process that can require careful planning and execution to get right. Not to worry though, I'll be walking you through our step-by-step -step process. The first step is recognizing that you need to hire someone. These may happen when you have more work than your current team can handle or when you need skills that your team doesn't currently possess. As a service-based business, we keep track of our team's capacity here at Avalon. We aim to hire before the team is feeling overwhelmed, but not too early as to reduce profitability. Deciding when to hire can be a challenge though. Often as an early stage business, you will need to bootstrap a bit to wear multiple hats before you have enough revenue to make that first hire. Now that's normal, but changes as your business grows. Once you're large enough, and if you're growing quickly, you'll want to plan ahead so that you can hire before the need is critical. It usually takes time to get new employees trained and fully operational. Next, you must understand what you need in your new hire. This means identifying the skills and experience necessary to fill the role. Think about the tasks that the employee will perform and the skills they'll need to do those tasks. 
Create the list of skills and abilities that your new hire will need and use this when reviewing applicants. There will likely be technical skills as well as soft skills like customer service or verbal communication. Both skill types are important and should be listed out explicitly so that you can refer back to them when reviewing candidates. Next, you'll need to create your job description. A well-written job description outlines the roles and responsibilities of the position. It should also list the required skills, experience, and qualifications. You can choose whether to include a salary range or not within this. In my experience, it's important that the candidates are aware of the potential wage early on in the hiring process so there is no mismatch of expectations. A clear job description helps attract the right candidates and sets clear expectations of both the employee and the employer. Once you have a clear job description, it's time to advertise the position. There are many ways to do this, including posting the job on your website, job boards, or social media. Choosing the right platform for your job posting is also important. You want to look at the websites that are popular among job seekers in your industry. LinkedIn, Indeed, or JobBank Canada are often good resources, and it also helps to post on industry-specific job sites if those are available. Your job posting needs to be compelling to attract the right candidates. It should clearly state the job title, summarize the role, list key responsibilities, and highlight the benefits of working for your company. And no, advertising minimum legal requirements like covering CPP and EI are not going to make you stand out, at least not for the right reasons. Think of any time where you've looked for a job and consider what information attracted you or helped you determine that the role was right for you. You want to show the benefits of working with your company specifically. Now, this usually starts with monetary compensation, but there are also other more qualitative ones as well. Consider including things like flexible working hours, the option for remote work, or paid professional development training in your offer. Be very clear on how to apply for the position and what you expect from applicants. If you want applicants to provide a resume and cover letter explaining why they're applying and why they're right for this exact role, then make sure you explicitly state that. After receiving applications, the next step is screening and interviewing candidates. Screening involves reviewing resumes to identify the most qualified candidates based on their required duties and responsibilities. I often find that there will be a number of candidates that don't follow the application process properly. I will usually remove these from the running unless their application is extremely good. Being able to follow instructions is an important skill for an employee to have. Once you've narrowed down the list of candidates, invite your shortlist of applicants to participate in an interview. Next up, we're conducting interviews. Interviews are a crucial step in the hiring process. They give you the chance to assess a candidate's skills, experience, and cultural fit. Here are some key points to keep in mind when interviewing. Prepare ahead of time. Before the interview, review the candidate's resume and job description again. This will help you form relevant questions and better understand what you are looking for in the candidate. Start with a warm welcome. Begin the interview on a positive note. Welcome the candidate, introduce yourself, and explain the format of the interview. This can help put the candidate at ease and set the stage for a productive conversation. Ask open-ended questions. Open-ended questions encourage candidates to provide more detailed responses. Ask about their previous work experience, how they handled challenges, and how they contributed to their past teams. Assess skills and cultural fit. While technical skills are important, don't overlook cultural fit. Ask questions that help you understand the candidate's work style, values, and how they work with others. Remember, skills can be taught, but cultural fit is harder to change. Provide information about the job and company. Give the candidate a clear picture of the job role, expectations, and company culture. This can help them decide if they're a good fit for your organization. Towards the end of the interview, give the candidate a chance to ask their own questions. This can provide valuable insight into what's important to them, their interest in the role, and even their analytical thinking skills. Close the interview professionally. Wrap up the interview by thanking the candidate and letting them know about the next steps and when they can expect to hear back from you. Remember, interviews are a two-way street. It's not just about finding out if the candidate is right for your company, but also if your company is right for the candidate. The best candidates will likely be assessing you in this process. After the interviews, the next step is to conduct reference and background checks. This helps verify information provided by the candidate and assess their reliability. We typically ask candidates to provide two references. Ideally, we want them both to be past work supervisors, but this may not always be possible. Ask their references open-ended questions and don't be shy to ask them to elaborate on their answers further. You can learn a lot from people who have previously worked with the candidate. After finding the right candidate, it's time to make them a job offer. When creating the offer, consider the complete package that you're providing. 
This includes the salary, which should be competitive and fair based on the candidate's skills, experience, and industry standards. Compensation is also more than just the paycheck. It also involves benefits like health insurance, retirement plans, and vacation time. Details about all these benefits should be clearly outlined in the offer and even quantified where possible. The start date should also be included in the job offer. It can help to be flexible on this as the candidate may need to provide their current employer with notice. Keep in mind that the candidate might want to negotiate. Be prepared for this and know in advance what aspects of the offer you are willing to adjust. And finally, make the candidate feel valued and show excitement about the potential of them joining your team. This can make a big difference in their decision to accept the offer or go with another opportunity. Once your offer has been accepted, the next step is to onboard your new employee. Onboarding is a critical stage of the hiring process. It introduces the new hire to the organization, its cultural and their role within it. A well-executed onboarding process helps the employee feel welcomed and valued. It helps to increase their enjoyment as well as their engagement and commitment to the business. The onboarding process can start with a formal welcome, introducing the new hire to their team and setting up their workspace and necessary equipment. This is also a good time to make sure that they understand their role and responsibilities by providing them with the necessary training and background information. Next, you'll provide information such as company policies, culture, and expectations. Let the new employee know who they can approach if they have any questions or issues. It's also helpful to provide additional context around what is going on in the business. Provide a high-level overview of how the business works and give them details about the different roles and departments. This helps people understand the why of things. Knowing why things are done can help your employees make better informed decisions while going about their duties. Implementing coworker mentoring or a buddy system can also be beneficial. Pairing the new hire with a seasoned employee and doing some job shadowing can help them adjust more quickly. Lastly, onboarding is not a one-day event, but a process that can span over several months. Regular check-ins during this period can ensure the new hire is settling in well. If you follow these main steps when hiring, you'll know you've done a good job of finding the right person and setting them up for success. The first few months of a new job can be a learning period for both you and the new employee. This is why employers use a probation period. This is a set time, often three to six months, where you can see if the new hire fits well with the job and the team. Probation periods are a good idea for several reasons. They allow you to assess the employee's skills, work ethic, and ability to fit into your company culture before making a long-term commitment. It also gives the new hire a chance to understand their role better and decide if the job meets their expectations. Open communication is critical during this period. Regular feedback sessions can help the new employee understand what is expected of them and how well they're doing. Sometimes, despite best efforts, the employee might not be the right fit for the company. It's often tough to make the decision to let someone go, but it can be the best thing for both parties in the long run. It allows the employee to find a role that better suits their skills and allows the company to find a better match for the position. All right, I hope this hiring guide has given you some useful insights into the hiring journey. There's a lot to learn when hiring employees and you're bound to make mistakes. Embrace the process and give yourself and your employee the best chance for success. Once you've found the right person, you'll also need to make sure they're sorted out on the payroll side of things. Don't worry, we've got you covered there too. Check out the links in the description for detailed info on running payroll. All right, well, that does it for another video. Please do hit that subscribe button and subscribe to the channel if you're feeling these videos are useful. It really does motivate us to put out more content so that we can help as many Canadian business owners as possible. Subscriber or not, I appreciate you for making it this far in the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.